Two weeks ago, I had a surprise $200 bill come up. I did what any good Christian girl would do. I worried. I worried all day. I worried all night. I just worried, 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 worried. I ended up getting a random $200 check in the mail that covered it. And it made me question what I believed about God's provision. Now, I'm not saying that God just always sends checks in the mail, but I am saying that he provides. One of my favorite teachers used to say, don't claim to believe that Jesus fed the 5,000. If you don't believe he can feed the four in your family. When I started to notice how much I worry on a daily basis, it pointed out to me what I really believe and the errors in my thinking. I've noticed in my pattern when something went wrong, first, I would spend hours just worrying about and focusing on the impending disaster that I believed would happen and the worst possible scenario. Then I would sit for hours just in a mantra, repeating myself over and over again, thinking that the more I repeated myself, the better chance I had that God might take notice or pay attention. Then I would go find somebody who is more spiritual than me and see if they could pray for me to try to get leverage on God. So what's wrong with all this? I didn't understand the character of God. If God already paid for everything on the cross, if he is love and compassion, if he is capable and willing, why would I worry? If his love is based on who he is and not what I've done, then why would somebody whose performance was better than mine's prayers be answered before mine? Romans 4, 3 says that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. He believed in God's character not his performance. And lastly, why do I need to convince God to listen when he already is or beg him to love me when he already does? In a sense, isn't begging for these things almost showing a lack of faith in his character? I'm not saying anything against praying without ceasing or praying with your brothers. These are all important. What I'm talking about is the attitude behind why we're doing these things. I should pray without ceasing, but I should pray a prayer of thanksgiving for what he's already accomplished in and through us on the cross from a state of thanksgiving, not a state of worry. Worry comes from doubting the character of God. James 1, 7 says a person who doubts should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. But when we pray, we have to believe. I was visiting a church out of the area for New Year's and the pastor got up and asked um, what, what people were most blessed with this year, what they were most grateful for. The question wasn't, what did you overcome? The question was, what are you most grateful for? Every single person that stood up in that church started crying and talking about what a horrible year they had had and asked people if they would beg God for them for a better year next year. Why was the church so depressed, I thought to myself. You're telling me no one in the whole church has anything positive to say? Even if our circumstances are bad, there shouldn't be despair. Despair comes from a lack of hope. When Paul was in prison after he had been beaten, he was singing songs of praise. So what was the difference? The people in that church didn't believe in the character of God. Paul did. The people lived in fear that God might not come through for them. That maybe that promise that God works all things together for good for those who love him wasn't true. Paul, however, saw past his circumstances. He believed in the character of God. In fact, he believed in it so much that he can remain in hope that God was already working things out in his favor. Hope brings joy in the present even before the circumstances change. Our hope and faith in God should cause us to live in joy. If we're not in joy, we should question what we really believe about God and his character. Now, what not to do is go add guilt onto your depression. But what you should do is meditate on the character of God and let that change how you communicate with him, how you react, and even how you feel. God loves you and he wants great things for you. Don't live in the defeat he paid such a great price to buy you out of. There's no greater love than someone who lays his life down for his brother. And that's exactly the way that God loved you. Rejoice in that lover. Rejoice in that love. Rejoice in hopeful expectation and rejoice in him.